backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. My good friend TJ Harris of Decipher Down and I got on a call to not only catch up with each other, but to talk about the newly released single, Cycles. Let's jump into the call. I have TJ Harris, my good friend here. What's going on? Not much, but you've got something going on. Tell us about your new single, Cycles. Just released. It's out all streaming services. I saw on Facebook you were teasing the Making of Cycles video. Tell us about that and maybe what else you've got going on. Uh, yeah, so what's coming out for Cycles that I'm putting together right now, it's just a walkthrough of the vocals. Because, you know, I've, I've done the lead work thing. And, you know, I mean, we had on the footage that Tyler shot for us on the Seven Day Slumber Tour, you know, did a terrific job. So we're talking Tyler Bars, the videographer and photographer. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Ben did a drum thing. And, and um, Harry, I, I think it was one of Donovan's uh, family members as a drummer, and they wanted to do something with Cycles. So they, they put something together for Cycles and posted that. So I'm going to, I'm just doing a walkthrough. It's kind of cool because you, you mute all the music and you get to solo some of the, the vocal lines and listen to some of the harmonies without the main vocal on top right, of it. Right, yeah. So I'm doing some of that stuff, just kind of going through it, you know, the screams, that you know, all that kind of stuff. Kind of talk about a little bit of the gear that I use uh, recording and a little bit of that process. So that should be available before this airs. Yeah. Just trying to get the song out, get the word out about new music. And um, we do have some other skeletons of songs that are, you know, in the works. And I don't want to jump ahead of you. I know you, you might have some different questions about stuff like that. But, yeah, it's, it's good. It's great. We're, we're happy that we finally released the song. We've been sitting on it for a while now. Last year, we talked about it just before you went on tour. You were adding it to your set list, but yeah. you just weren't quite ready to release it. You were kind of trying to back up some stuff in the funnel. So is the funnel got anything in it? <laughs> it's got some skeletons in it. There's a couple of songs in the works, and and there's more than just new music. There's also... Um, Wait, let me guess. You're almost finished with the 10th anniversary of the Crash album? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. It ain't that far from being done. Like It's almost mixed down. It's... Yeah. Uh, got artwork for it and one day people will start seeing what looked like the crash cover but with a black background and some other little fancy details it's pretty cool it kind of looks like the um the black crash t-shirts that we sold but it'll say something like uh crash live 10th anniversary or you know something something like that what all is it gonna have on it there's the whole crash album there's a couple of end of gray songs there's a couple of other side of darkness songs scarecrow there's a lot of songs you know Mm -hmm. there's like six it's like 16 songs 16 17 songs so i'd like to get it out there i know you've had a tough time mixing this because you took like the best of the whole tour right yeah (laughs) one song might be from one venue and one song might be another venue you want it to kind of seamlessly move from song to song and and make sense together as one piece of work you may hear me call out nashville one night and hear me call out ohio the next night but, you know, sonically, you want everything to sound the same. And when you're in a different room every night, bigger, smaller, um, the way the stage is laid out, you know, how close our, our amps are to our vocal mics because of the size of the stage and things like that. It's like it changes everything. And so you have to kind of work with all that in the mix. And I've been doing it myself in, in my off time. And, and off time is limited these days. I'm working full time. It's just it's, it's really hard, you know. Yeah. As much as I want to seclude myself up here in the studio and do that how is your studio coming along i'm gonna tell you okay so oh gosh i opened a can Uh, of worms you know we built this addition onto our house we've been we've been living in our starter home we we got married and bought this house in 2005 we've been here now for 18 years the bonus room over the garage was going to be my studio and we were going to give the kids my building basically as a, a hangout spot for them. They're getting a little older now, teenagers, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was going to put the studio over the garage. was going to be my studio. Then I thought to myself, you know, everybody in Nashville who's got a studio over the garage, do they really want their studio over their garage, or do they do that because they have limited space, because the houses are, most, most of the time, really close to each other? And I thought, I think they do it because they have to. I think if they had their choice, they'd be in a separate building on their property 
where they can isolate from, you know, the noise of the house, garage doors opening up and down and all that kind of stuff. And I thought to myself, you dummy, <laughs> you already got what you need here. It's, it's already, you know, so I'm keeping my studio out here and I've, I've got a, by the time I've got a lean to on the back of the studio, that's the same size as the building It's 12 by 20. So once we're finished with the house, I'm going to work toward enclosing that. And then I'll have a live room and a control room and I'll have a 20 by 24 space. Yeah. It's coming along. <laughs> we're not finished, but we're getting there. What's the best thing about this season of your life? I don't know. It's kind of rough right now. What I would like to say is that it's been nice to be home because I've been able to spend more time with my family, not touring, but it's challenging in other ways. Uh, you know, in trying to um, trying to finish this house up, I, I actually haven't got to spend as much time with my family as I'd like to. It's like I'm there, but I'm not there. Right. Like I'm amongst them, but, you know, it's it's hard to be present. So I'm actually looking forward to this house being done because... I want to be able to be more present. You know, you, you hear people say stuff like be intentional with what you do and your actions and your words and all this kind of stuff all the time. But it's easier said than done sometimes um, because life is all around us. And it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse because I, I will sometimes work until eight or nine o'clock at night on this house. And I'm tired of doing that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm tired of missing things that I'm actually there for and still can't see, you know. So what does all this mean as far as booking shows? If it, if it works out where I can do a show, I mean, I will, I will definitely go do a show, but I'm going to spend some time with my family now, too. I'm not going to go out on a, on a long tour. You know, I think three-month tours, things like that, are, that's kind of tough right now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't mind going out for a handful of shows. And, and um, you know, we're playing a live fest this year. Stoked about that. We haven't played a live fest in a couple of years. It's going to be nice. So we may see you out there for some festivals. Yeah. So we've talked about possibly being some one-offs or something or some summer touring, that sort of thing. But the lineup to TJ Harris, Harris and Muffley, and Ben Millhouse, correct? Ben and, and Harry are there. Yeah, and, and we'll hire a bass player or, you know, if, if we go out with somebody for a few days or something, we'll, we'll pull one of the other musicians or something like that, you know. Well, let's talk about that new song a little bit more. Tell us a little bit more about the story behind Cycles. So, you know, originally me and Chris sat down to write the song, and we just started thinking about how in this world today, it's all about social media, and it's all about the look. It's about the shot, the picture. Do the best you can with the angle, and, you know, it really doesn't even matter if you get a good shot because you're going to doctor it up and do this and do that. You're going to basically suck the life out of the photo. Um, cover up the pain, you know, all, all the things that we talk about in that song. And our kids are getting brainwashed. We're brainwashing ourselves. Everybody's living a fairy tale on social media, and none of it's real. It's basically a social media illusion. Yeah, and it's all an illusion, and you're and you're miserable because you can't live that life that you see everybody else living on Facebook and Instagram. It's not even real. You know, it's it's crazy. We go through the motions. We get stuck in this thing of scrolling, scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling. When we just need to unplug, I don't know. It's like, how, how do you get anywhere in life? How do you love on people? How do you, uh, and influence in the here and now, if you can't put your phone down long enough to, to do it? So it was, it was a lot about that. And, and then it's like, you know, if you, even if you do have that kind of platform and you're able to do that, are, are you using it for the right reasons? Are you showing people the love of Christ? And, you know, or are you just, you know, creating another fairy tale that's unattainable and, and isn't real, you know? Uh, so a lot of that was what the song was about. But yeah, I mean, you know, let's be real and love on people. Let's let's use our our platforms for good. And life isn't all roses, and it's it's okay to to show a little pain. Yeah, it's okay to to let people know that you're not perfect. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And as your last solo single says, we have to remember to walk love, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Out Performance Shop is a proud supporter of Solid Rock Radio. They specialize in retail and wholesale of automotive, high-performance, racing, and off-road products. They also carry a variety of accessories from remote control cars to rock and roller multi-carts. On the web at outperformance.com. I love that song. Walk Love is so good. That was your last solo song, right? Yeah, yeah, it was my last solo single. I've, I've got a few more in the pipes for that, too. Um, 
actually I've got a lot. I've got a lot of songs. And um, well, let's hear a little bit about that. Um, well, my next single, I believe, is going to be Highway Man. And which, gosh, I probably said this last <laughs> time we talked. I started playing a little bit more locally here around town, um, Winston Salem. Me and a guy named Dustin Bryant, he was in a, a band called Jukebox Rehab, and they, they were really making a stink locally here for a minute. And he decided that as season was timed to end, so he um, he stepped down from that band probably six or eight months ago. Mm-hmm. And I had a show coming up to open for a guy named Creed Fisher at Ziggy's here in town. Mm-hmm. So he had two practices with us, and, and we played a full country show opening up for, for Creed Fisher. We crushed good. it. It was great. Yeah, it was really cool. good. That was back in October. And he's been wanting to just get together and do some acoustic shows where we can do a you know, two and a half, three hour set and we split it up. You sing some, I sing some. And, you know, it works out great. You know, I'll be doing some of that stuff and ha- having a good time doing that, just building a more local following. You know, I, I kind of got thrown out early in my career all across the country and playing Christian rock, but I never really got to build in the local scene. I'm not doing rock in the local scene. I do some elements of that. I mean, as far as, you know, how, how I play and and everything. I mean, my brand of country is definitely not, uh, I guess, mild or, or lame by any means. <laughs> I don't think. Get that um, country rock, southern country yeah, rock. Yeah, it's rocking. So, but yeah, probably Highway Man. I got a song called Highway Man that's pretty rocking. It's got a little swing to it. I've probably got 15, 15, 16 other songs after that. And, I, and I'm not sure if I want to, you know, release them one by one or put out a whole album. If people want to check that out, it's TJ Harris Music. Yeah, go check me out. TJ Harris Music on Instagram, Facebook. I've got a TikTok, too. It's official TJ Harris Music. Somebody I, somebody started a, a TikTok called TJ Harris Music before I could. Mm. So it's the I, one social media platform that I've got that is not TJ Harris Music. <laughs> <laughs> and it might have been me. I, I, I'm not <laughs> oh, sure. No. I might have opened one, and then I couldn't get back into it. Honestly, it might have been me. I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, Love <laughs> it. Roll with the punches, don't you, TJ? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, I'm not going to let it slow me down. Does Decipher Down have a TikTok? No, Decipher Down doesn't have a TikTok, and I've been thinking about starting one. Maybe. You know what I did? Um, the last time I played in Nashville, I might have said when I was telling people to go follow me, it was just like a short five song thing downtown at a at a bar. And I might have told them to go follow me on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. TJ. I was tired. I, I drove in from Carolina <laughs> seven hours. I'm not the really the fact sure. that you don't even know. And yeah, it makes it better, right? <laughs> makes it better, yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there's probably some people still clicking around MySpace trying to find it. That's hilarious. So we've covered Decipher Down and the Country Project, but what about some of the T.J. Harris music acoustic shows, the ones where you do a little Decipher Down, Fighting Instinct, maybe a little country thrown in? I've got a few shows in the works, not any big tours. I've I've got uh, somebody hit me up in Ohio, and I'm playing in Lynchburg, Roanoke, somewhere in that area. In July, it's like a July 4th bash, and uh, I'm playing something like once a month right now, locally. That's pretty much it right now. Okay. Tell me a couple of artists that influenced you. Um, so when I was when I was younger, I wasn't really allowed to listen to anything other than Christian music when I was really young. So Stephen Curtis Chapman was about as heavy as it got. Uh, so I listened to a lot of Stephen Curtis Chapman in my early years. It was for the sake of the call, Great Adventure, uh, Signs of Life, uh, or before that, uh, Heaven in the Real World. All those great mm-hmm. albums, great musicianship, great lyrics great singing great everything was just so great great guitar playing and if you see me lead worship somewhere or you hear me do an acoustic set you'll definitely hear some of that in my my singing and and playing probably more in my playing really just i'm just a really percussive acoustic player and um some of that came from lord of the dance songs like that Mm -hmm. um I mean, just the way that riff is played on that song, just really, it always stuck with me, the way he beat on that guitar. I just loved it. But yeah, some of that stuff is just so percussive, and it always stuck with me. And so when I play acoustic, anybody who's seen me play acoustic, they probably think that I probably beat the crap out of my guitar, but that's just, that's one of the reasons why. Um, vocally, Stephen Curtis Chapman as well, but then also, of course, Chris Cornell. Later on, I, I'd gotten a Audio Slave album 
the first one that came out back in like 02 or 03. My, my brother bought it for me. And from then, I actually dug back into Soundgarden. And just a huge influence from then on locally on up and, and to, to still this day. I studied his voice for a long time. And, and, and the funny thing is, it wasn't until I started working with Brett that I was actually able to sing some of the stuff correctly. Because I, I spent a lot of time uh, in my early days with Fighting Instinct. We did a bar tour with Family Force 5, and it was like we played like 49 shows in 60 days. Wow. And uh, I mean, it Man, was I wish I could go back and see that. Yeah, well, we, we played we played Georgia. We went we went all around the southeast. I mean, we were in your neck of the woods for sure. I remember playing Atlanta. I hate that I missed that. Yeah, I mean, but it was a lot of sm- smoky bars, monitors, no no in ears. Just back then, everybody just raw was, stuff. Yeah, back then everybody smoked in the bars and stuff, and you know you don't really do that anymore. So it, it kicked my butt for a long time, and and so I got in some really bad habits with my singing. And when I joined Decipher Down, it you know kind of carried over. And even just doing 30, 45 minute sets was kicking my butt. And then I started working with Brett. Um, I realized what I was doing wrong. He he got me on the right path. And then I started trying to sing some of that Cornell stuff. And I was like, wow, I can I can sing all the Cornell stuff. Like all the early days, the the bad motor finger, the the, uh, the even the stuff before that, beyond the wheel, uh, some super high stuff. And it was kind of crazy because I, I just I just thought that was the top of my range. I couldn't get me higher, but it was just because I was singing it correctly. So that, that was cool for me. Nobody else cares about stuff like that. <laughs> of course we want to hear it. I think that's very interesting. Learn how to sing correctly, people. Speaking of high, and not that kind of high. Speaking <laughs> of high notes, uh, cycles, man. Dude. Yeah, I shot myself in the foot on that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, you know, that's the thing. It's like... I, that song for me, number three or four in the set list, is like perfect. I'm yeah. good and warm. I'm, Warmed I'm up. ready to, yeah, I'm pulled back like a slingshot. Just let me go. But at the end of the set, oh, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's a high song. It's one of those songs that I, I don't sing it raspy. I don't have to. Right. You don't sing that high raspy. That's just like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> disaster, <laughs> yeah. But you got yeah, kind of a little right. more scream than you normally do. In some parts of it, yeah. The end of it and all that in the, in the bridge. I mean, yeah, that, that doesn't bother me to do because um, it's not like consistent through the whole song. Yeah. It's fun to sing, though. It's yeah, fun to hear. <laughs> Thanks. We know there's a, there's a funny part about your, your voice. It's like, especially when you sing the way I do every night, it's like you never know what you're going to get from night to night. I mean, it always comes out. You know, did I have to push harder? Did I have to focus more? Did I have to take it easy to get to it? You know, did I have to relax? You know, whatever. It's like every night there's a method to the madness, and it's like I, I have to kind of see where I'm at. It's an instrument, but, you know, I'm human at the same time. It's not like a guitar, and you just pick it up, and as long as you got good strings on it and, you know, your amp set right or whatever, you're good to go. It's like, you know, you got to be easy with it and, and do right. And I, I love to talk, and that is just – and I love coffee. <laughs> Those two things. You give me coffee and I'll talk all day. It's like, you know, it just doesn't work out good. So, <laughs> Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. And how is the DDRV? Uh, the DDRV is hopefully is going to be somebody else's RV soon. <laughs> You've given up on it. Oh, my gosh. I have so given up on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm over that thing. Well, you know, it, it's been great for us. It's it, It's got low miles. You have a new engine in it, right? Yeah, we we did the engine. We did generators. Uh, yeah, we did roof, did air compressor for the air riding brakes. Um, we did alternator. You know, you name it. We've done a lot to it. Yeah. Um, it's time to for it to move on to somebody else. I'm gonna be honest. We used uh, or rented a van to go up to play Capulet Fest. Mm-hmm. So we went up to uh, Maine and came back down. To Rhode Island, and it was the most peaceful, easy, peaceful, easy feeling. <laughs> yeah, peaceful, easy feeling. It really was <laughs> peaceful, easy feeling. It was. Oh, we didn't have to worry about no generator breaking down and losing our ACs. Like you know, and in, you in knew it RV. wasn't going to let you down. Yeah, I know it all... won't let me down. I mean, it was great. I was already in a van. <laughs> uh, so good you know you lose a generator in the rv you lose ac um, yeah 
except for the driver's AC, which it's like a normal dash AC in a car, and it's just not enough to, to cool the whole RV. So, you know, if the generator goes down, you've lost ACs. If something happens to a, to a pump, you know, you, you lose running water. It's like there's just all these things all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and you still got you know, cocoa puffs up there all over the <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I hit the brakes one time, and, and Brandon's standing in the, you know, at the counter with, thankfully, a dry bowl of cocoa pebbles. Thankfully, I love this story. I can hear it every time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm topping a hill. I top the hill, and there is just standstill traffic. I slam on the brakes. And let me tell you something about air brakes on this RV. They work. <laughs> Up they on work a dime. really well. Oh, my gosh. I hit the brakes, and I hear, do, 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 do. And it's Brandon, like, flying forward and just catching a step every now and again backwards. He's coming towards the front, facing backwards with his bowl of cocoa pebbles in his hands. Thank God there's no milk in it. And me and – it was either me and Marshall or me and Ben. We heard him coming. We both just threw our arms out. Uh-huh. We had our arms out. I mean, it was his back that we caught. And we both caught him. Luckily, we didn't rip our arms out of socket. You know, before he ended up laying up on the dash, you know, the dash on that thing is like three feet deep. Yeah, it is. It is. And and we worked hard to clean the RV up. But months later, I was vacuuming and I sucked up some cocoa pebbles and I just started giggling. I bet there's still some in there somewhere. It probably. It, it was funny. Well, I'm proud to say I rode in the DDRV before yep, yeah. it's passed on to someone else. <laughs> yeah. Um, it needs to go to a weekend, which, you know, I guess that's kind of what we do now. <laughs> Just to show here. That, Wait a minute, you know, it's going to go to you. <laughs> well, it's different when you, you get in it and you, you go two hours away to a camp spot. Or yeah. you take it right. up to the mountains to go four-wheeling or, you know, something like that. You know, it's like, okay, let's jump in it and go to Maine. You know, <laughs> let's jump in it and go to Texas for the weekend. That's a different thing, you know. Yeah. And I, but honestly, yeah, getting in the van and just going, it, it's it's always nice to have that extra room of the RV, but to get in something that you know is going to get you there and you're not going to have any hiccups. And if you have a flat, you don't have to call some tow company that's going to charge you $800 to change your tire because it's a normal car tire that you can change right. on your own. It means a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the RV was a ticking time bomb. So are there any other tour stories you'd like to share? Okay, on the Seventh Day Slumber Tour, I had lost my voice. So we played four or five shows in a row, and then we had a few days off. And the very last show of that little run before we were off was outdoor acoustic by the river. Gorgeous outside. We were in Tennessee. Played like a 30-minute acoustic set. And I woke up the next morning, and I couldn't talk. And I I don't know why. I, I still never figured it out. Like, I just completely lost my voice. And I didn't really get my voice back for that entire tour. I found a workaround. Um, I, I guess as long as I've been doing it, as long as Brett Manning has been my vocal coach, I've learned how to not push through to find the notes, but to relax and find the notes. And I ended up finding this weird, screamy, raspy way to, to sing on key all the high stuff. But it was only in like my mid range, and then I would go up into my high register, and all the high stuff would come out clear as a bell. And I'm like, "What is going on?" But so Brett told me he's like, "You need to eat some garlic, some like straight up fresh minced garlic." I didn't get the memo about adding anything with it. I was just like, "All right, I'm going to do this." I went and got a thing of garlic. I don't eat onions. I, evidently, I don't eat raw garlic. Because let me tell you what happened. There's a video out there somewhere of this. We we bought this little mincing contraption and i minced up like three cloves of garlic and i ate it straight and i had no idea how hot and nasty that would be (laughs) and i thought i was going to lose my lunch for sure and and i don't know if it was the way that i did it not doing it with hummus nasty (laughs) not a fan of hummus it's very weird yeah so but evidently it's supposed to be pretty good with garlic but uh i you know i just ate it straight three cloves Oh, my gosh, it's so bad. Oh, my gosh, it was the worst thing I've ever put into my mouth in my life. And I ate it, and I swallowed it. You know when you when you get around somebody that's eating a lot of garlic, and they just kind of, they got that kind of oniony kind of smell? Like, like it just kind of radiates? Yeah. I know that after that show, after I've been sweating, I had to smell like that. I bet I smell like that for days. I bet you smell like it now. 
I, yeah, I bet, you know, here we are six months later, eight months later. I, I bet that stuff is still oozing out of my pores. It's so nasty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but there's a good little video out there somewhere on Facebook or Instagram of it. Um, it's pretty great. The link to that video on Instagram is on the blog page for this interview on Solid Rock Radio. It was funny. Everybody got a good laugh. And, uh, but did it work? But I, And here's the funny part. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. It didn't work at all. And, and, but, you know, I think it maybe it was maybe the way I did it, you know, just eating it straight like that and just all at once. Maybe did he you just say that you should have mixed it with hummus because you he, need like buy garlic I, hummus. Right. No, he said it needed to be freshly minced garlic. But I, I think that there was a two part thing there. Number one, it wasn't going to be so disgusting if I'd mixed it with hummus. Number two, I would have been eating it gradually instead of all at once, which might have made a difference. Either way, everybody got a good laugh, and I still had to, you know. If any fans got up next to TJ to get their picture made, and he smelled like garlic, <laughs> now you oh. know the whole story. Oh, yeah, it was bad. We, we were up north somewhere at that point. I mean, we like I say, we had like three days off, and I never, it, it never came back. And for that whole tour, I, I sang like that all the way up, and I mean, went up north. Back down to Florida and over to Texas and back. Good story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Ah, uh, good times, good times. I've been fortunate to be a part of Decipher Down. Just really been blessed to be used by the Lord. And then people have come to me and, and told me some things. You know, we get emails and things like that of people and their testimonies and and how, you know, they, they say, you know, a song off the Crash album or, or not or the other side of darkness or something like that has, you know, touched them and helped them get through a hard time. And there was a couple that came up to me in Chicago. We'd been on a hiatus for three or four years and we were on tour. This is 2015 or 16. And this guy came to me. He, he told me how his wife had left him and they weren't living any kind of righteous lifestyle, I guess you'd say, or. Just, they just weren't living right, and they had been separated for a good while, and, and uh, he said that she needed a place to stay. He let her crash on uh, his, his couch. Every day, he played best I can throughout the house. And he said it, it wasn't long after that that they ended up getting remarried. Now they've got like five kids. They've been married like, I don't know, 10 or 12 years, you know, at least 15 years, something like that. However, however old Crash is, probably, I'm guessing. And I was just blown away. That song didn't didn't do that. The Holy Spirit did that, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I didn't do that. That that was the Holy Spirit. God could have used anybody. And and I think you know God can use anybody. He he used Moses. He he used. I mean, come on. He also used a donkey. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like he's using one right here. You know. What I mean? but, you know um. But, you know, just to be a willing vessel and to be used of God, it's it's something. It's something. I'm telling you, I just feel so blessed when, when I hear a story like that. And, and, it, and it wasn't because I made it happen. It was just because I was willing to obey. He could have used anybody and he could have used any song, you know, but the, but the Holy Spirit comes to comfort people and. And be there with us in our time of need. And, and, and I think that's exactly what happened. I think it was a beautiful thing. I'd love to hear that story and, and, and other stories like that. And it's, it's just um, it's a blessing to be a part of something like that. You know? Yeah. To leave a legacy like that. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's amazing. Well, TJ, I hope to see you soon out there on the road, maybe at a festival. Or um, hot dog retail outlet. Now you're talking. Definitely, Dan and I'll meet you over there at the Dario in North Carolina. We'll get us some ice cream. <laughs> at least that. <laughs> at least. At least. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Bye. Right, bye. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more great music. And check out my blog page on the Solid Rock Radio website for my guests' social media links. If you've missed any of my past interviews, you can find them uploaded to podcast.solidrockradio.org. Have a wonderful week, and let's be kind to one another.